It's like a OnePlus 2, but smaller, and cheaper, and fancier. Yeah, in a way. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this might be the next little thing in affordable smartphones. Let's take a quick look at the OnePlus X. I know, I know, unboxings are so passe. But OnePlus does such a good job with presentation that it's warranted. This box is made from thick, soft-touch material that feels more expensive than many other OEMs are doing. The phone is front and center where it should be, and the cable and power adapter are artfully displayed rather than just tossed in willy-nilly. The cable itself is Linguini style and covered in soft-touch rubber with a nice strap to keep it gathered together and a micro USB 2.0 connector. No fancy type C here. That's about it for the box, aside from the literature you won't read, and even this is packaged and presented nicely. Again, OnePlus really knows how to make an affordable phone feel, well, less affordable. The same goes for the device itself, which is covered in peel-off protection that barely gives off a whisper as it leaves the onyx black glass on the backside and Corning Gorilla Glass 3 on the front. The mid-plate joining the glass halves is aluminum with chamfered edges and an Art Deco stripe job breaking it up with bottom-mounted speakers that seem pretty loud on our first listen. Despite the logo they share in common, the OnePlus X couldn't look less like its pricier sibling if it tried. Where the OnePlus 2 is big, thick, and rough with its sandstone back, the OnePlus X, at less than 7 millimeters thick, feels so tiny, and so fancy, and so slippery. Like many glass phones, this one will slide off any tabletop you've got, and it picks up fingerprints like a detective in an old crime novel. Sadly, it seems like a case, or at least a screen protector, will be very important for this one. The software is Oxygen OS 2.1.2, which is built on Android Lollipop, eh, and brings all the custom flair we covered in our OnePlus 2 review. It looks fantastic on this Full HD AMOLED panel, which is 5 inches and quite bright on this cloudy day. We'll go into all this in more detail in our forthcoming OnePlus X review, but I'm happy to see OnePlus do the notification switch again. That switch and the buttons across from it feel much nicer than you'd expect, given the phone's $249 price tag, and that actually goes for the device as a whole, too. Still, that's more expensive than some of the competition at this level, so we'll be taking a critical look at the OnePlus X in the full review. In particular, I'm a little concerned about the battery life given the smallish power pack, and it remains to be seen how well the older Snapdragon 801 processor will keep up with the latest build of Oxygen OS. Finally, the lack of bands 12 and 17 will make this a non-starter for some here in the States. But my first impressions on the whole are quite positive. It's great to see any manufacturer bringing premium builds to mid-sized phones, and given our largely positive experience with the OnePlus 2, I'm really excited to get to know the OnePlus X. I've talked a lot more about this phone today in a different venue. That's the Pocket Now Weekly podcast. Check it out, episode 173, if you want some more, and get caught up on our earlier OnePlus coverage here on YouTube as well. Let us know what questions you want answered in the comments and on Twitter. Pocket Now is Pocket Now, and I am at Captain Two Phones. That's it for now. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.